Hi guys, and just in case you're joining us a little early, we started our Lunch and Learn because we have a, we're testing some new technology a little early, and we'll be back on at 12.30. Hello from Arizona. Oh, hello from Arizona, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Okay, so. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Lunch and Learn. Hi, this is Helen. I am your guest host today. And on the other side of the camera, we have a new technical officer. Okay, so Joan is running the systems today, so if we have a few glitches, it's my fault. <laughs> no, it would be mine. <laughs> so we're so glad that you joined us today for Lunch and Learn. We have a special guest as well. Um, can we bring up Iggy? So today's Lunch and Learn, we're gonna spend some time talking about applique. And I'm gonna share some of my tips and tricks and a brand new product that I just fell in love with um, that helps with applique. And Iggy is this egret, that picture you see, I captured in St. Croix one day. And Iggy is really, really a lot of fun. Um, so let's bring Iggy up on the, yep, the, Okay, all right, and so Iggy, I took that photograph and in a course with David Taylor, he taught me how to transpose that photograph into a freezer paper pattern. And I've been working on Iggy for quite a while. He's gonna be my opus, okay? And yep, that's right. And let's zoom in a little on Iggy. See if we can zoom in on Iggy's face. And in Iggy's face, there are 42 different fabrics running in Iggy's little face. Um, and all of those are done with the Applequick sticks that I'll show you and freezer paper and glue. But my goal was to get Iggy done in my retirement, but I had a left-hand turn in my retirement. <laughs> so Iggy just sits in my dining room and I have dinner every night with Iggy. And he keeps asking, can I, can I get some wings? I only have a neck. So um, I hope this year to get Iggy some wings. And then, um, then I will um, hand stitch those pieces together and then put it on the background and create the quilt. So that's Iggy the Egret. I hope you enjoyed getting to see him today. Um, I'm gonna show you some other examples and talk through. You have an interactive page and at the top of your screen, you'll see that link, patchworkgardenquilting.com forward slash lunch and that's your interactive page that has all today's featured items and in your featured items today you get 10% off if you purchase those by midnight tonight um, so we hope that you will take advantage of that so a couple of things with applique normally when we do applique we think about cutting out little pieces of fabric different colors creating a picture and putting them all together 
You can also do it just with crayons. So this one is just done with colored pencils and there's only one fabric in the center of that quilt. So that's a kind of fun way to do applique. One of my favorite products when doing applique is to use Steam Seam 2 Light. And when you're working with Steam Seam 2 Light, you're going to trace your little pieces of your design onto the Steam Seam. It has one side that is paper, and somewhere here there was an example of this. If so, if I'm looking askance, one moment please. That is not the technical issue, that is the human issue over here. Um, so, nope. They went for a walk. It's probably with a spider that we discovered as well today, so we've had some fun. But anyway, with Steam Seam 2, it's a lightweight, fusible web. It has paper on both sides, and you want to draw on the side of the paper, trace your pattern on the side of the paper that the web sticks to. And then iron it onto the back side of your fabric, cut it out with your scissors. And what I love about Steam Seam 2 is the back side of it is tacky. So you can build and create designs with lots of dimension and lots of different colors very easily. And here's an example of one that I did with Steam Seam 2. And in the penguin, can you see his little feet and his little beak? By having that sticky side, that let me hold all those little pieces together. And then there's another little cute little penguin at the bottom of the box. Okay, And actually, mom is holding that little penguin. So this is a fun little runner. I also like to use Heat and Bond Light. And Heat and Bond Light has paper on just one side. And instead of a web, it's more like a series of dots. Um, but that way, as Joan says, you don't have to worry about which side to trace the pattern on. Just trace it on the paper side. So Heat and Bond is really fun to use. I use some of it in this quilt. And that is just a fun applique quilt. The next one we have, and I have great news, guys, is called Soft Fuse. And I know Joan loves soft use tremendously, and jo so does Jeanette, in working with wool. And the great news is it's back in stock. At least it's coming into the warehouse within the next two or three weeks. So if you want some soft infuse, it comes in the sheets or it comes on a three-yard roll, make sure you order it now so we can get that into the warehouse order quickly so we make sure we grab it while it's there because that's been a challenge right Joan? It definitely has so yeah. I think it's for the end of this month. Okay so get your pre-orders in on Soft Infuse if you're interested in that. The other one that I really love is called Barely There and Barely There is actually aptly named called Barely There. It's as thin of a web, fusible web, as so, as, as so a soft fuse. But what I love about it is it goes through the printer, okay? So I can, and, and, and just an inkjet printer, don't put it in the big laser printer at the office, right? Um, what I love about it is because it goes through the printer, I don't have to trace all those pieces. So if I've got a pattern that has 500 petals in it, I don't want to trace 500 petals. I'd also wonder what am I doing doing a pattern with 500 petals. But I'm doing Iggy the Egret, so who knows. Um, the other thing, though, I love to do use it for is when there's a lot of precision in the pieces. So, for example, in this little quilt, I'll Be Home for Christmas, all those letters, I wanted to make sure that I that I didn't trace those with crooked lines and they all came out straight and perfect. So those I did with Barely There. And I also did Barely There, there, whoops, the wrong way, uh, because the little owl has a lot of wool in him. And so I also used it with that and I didn't want to affect the, the drape of the wool. So those are some of my favorite products with um, Fusible. There is a brand new one coming out. I haven't personally tested it yet, but I want to give a shout out to Pat Fulweiler, if she's on, and Bev, um, who let me know about a new product called Temply Fuse, and it's a new fusible that is coming out from, or has come out from So Steady. We should get some of this in next week, and I'll be testing it. I know Bev will as well. Um, so if you'd like to um, stay tuned with that or go ahead and order some, you're more than welcome to. And that is the new, and it's, they use it for when they do the Westerly designs where they do reverse applique. Um, and that's where they use that web. <coughs> the next one they want to talk about is how do you do that beautiful needle turn work. And this little quilt, some of you have seen this one before, but I want to bring it up. Joan, can you bring it, like zoom in on some of those little flowers right oh, there? Zoom in. Zoom in. Of course. Zoom in on one of those little flowers. 
Okay. Here we go. And can you see all the detail in the beautiful round corners and everything? This needle, needle turn little mini quilt was actually done by a lady I got to know from Japan. And she sent it to me as a thank, oh, let's not zoom in on my face that much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's showing every wrinkle that, uh, <laughs> got it, <laughs> got it. Um, but this cute little mini quilt was actually sent to me as a thank you gift for uh, when I helped uh, Noriko out in um, Houston. It was her first time to quilt festival. She didn't speak English. Um, she looked lost and I would see her every once in a while and take her to the class that she needed to go and a couple months later in the mail was that uh, quilt was sent to me as a thank you from her. And she wrote one side of the thank you card in Japanese and had her friend translate it into English. And I didn't know when I was helping her, but she actually won Houston that year. And so that's why she was here. It was her first trip to America. So yeah, I always treasured that little little quilt. Well, now you're going to teach them how to do that. Well, kind of, <laughs> but I'm going to teach them not how to do it with needle turn, but I'm going to teach them how to do it with a brand new product called Apple Pop. So let's switch over. Oops, switch over. <laughs> and Apple Pops is a series of concentric rings. Can you see these? And they come in different sizes and they come in pairs. So <coughs> they make beautiful circles, finished circles, from a 3 8 of an inch up to 2 inches. And your set comes, you can make eight different Apple Pops. And the way it works is two rings are going to nest inside each other. And that's going to create whatever the inner ring is, that's the size of your finished circle. So for example, here is one that I've already started working on. And we'll come back to it, but that's going to create, if you see that side, that's going to be the circle. What I love about that these circles, and we use other things as well. Uh, we have, and I love them, right? Uh, like the bigger perfect circles or the perfect circles uh, from Karen K. Buckley. Um, also her perfect leaves. But it's kind of like our sewing machine feet. We have so many different feet, and each one has a specialty. Like that open toe foot. I wouldn't trade it for anything, but I wouldn't want to do a quarter inch seam with it, but I could. So it's the same thing with some of our tools and notions as well. So I'm going to just kind of quickly show you how to make a circle with these. It's so much fun. So I'm just going to take two interlocking circles. One side has a flat side and one side has a beveled edge and they just nest together. Okay. And can you see, I can swing that inner ring around. So there's just the width of fabric located inside there. And if I do it the other way, bevel to think, bevel to round, to flat, it's a little tighter. So you can adjust based on the, the thickness of your fabric. I would not use this for wool applique. Not what I would do. We have some tips and tricks for that later in the year. We do for doing circles. <coughs> so I'm just going to take a piece of fabric and I'm going to put it right side down. So there's the, and this is the new um, Timeless Treasures Mixed Basics. I just love them. And I'm just going to pop that ring in, okay? And I'm going to move this over to a little firmer surface than my Steady Betty. And that's my mini Steady Betty, guys. I don't think they make them anymore. I think I got that the first year. And it sits next to my sewing machine and keeps everything, all my feet in the right place. Then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim around that circle, that outer edge ring, until I get my piece. And this does not have to be exact, guys. If I want a scant quarter inch went seam allowance, like if I'm doing the 3 8 inch circles, if I just keep my scissors at an angle, then it's going to cut me a narrow seam allowance because that outer ring is just about a quarter inch. So I'm just going to go round and round and round. Okay. And let's make sure my little iron is on. Normally I would do this with a regular iron, guys, but because of the magic of television, I didn't want the iron to take up my entire camera. Now what we're gonna do is kind of, it's the glue method for those of you and ooh, we dumped over glue. So when we get Oops. done, that's okay. No, Are you good? Get, it's just starch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so guys, I wanna let you know while I'm doing this, cause on camera, I know I will mess this up. <laughs> it is just a given as I've already just dropped a bottle of uh, starch on the table. <laughs> there, I'm it's, laughing because it's up. Uh, 
It's a common <laughs> occurrence. Right. And once I got the edges wet, then all I'm going to do is use my fingers, kind of like I'm fluting a pie crust, right? Just getting them to stand up a bit. And then I'm going to bring them over. And guys, these are really also, if you have ever used or have the AppliQuick rods, this is what I use to make Iggy the Egret. Um, these are fantastic and work really well. One is, is a fork, which lets me hold things steady. And this one is a point, which I can use a bigger point. But this end is the magical end. It has a flat little iron. And can you see that beveled edge? Okay, it has a flat little iron. Okay, and I'm just gonna flick it in and it's gonna start behaving itself. Okay. Oh, I love this. You like? I know, it is so much fun. And then I'm gonna take my little iron and I'm just gonna flick it over and start just sealing up those edges. What I wanna watch is I don't want any tucks to form, okay? If I have any pleats, I want them on the inside of the ring. If the pleat is on the outside of the ring, I am gonna get a little bump on my circle. But I have some good news, guys. Today, if you buy either the AppliQuix rods, or if you bought those already from us, or if you buy the Appli Pops, we're gonna have a pop party. Okay, and that's with a P, not with a T. I know it's New York State, and we can now do that. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to have a pop party on May 15th. I think that's the Saturday um, at like 11 o'clock. And we're going to have a, a, a Zoom class, and I'll be teaching it, and I'll teach you how to make all the basic shapes. Okay? So Karen Kudla, uh -huh. uh, we have a question, wants the, to know the difference between the Apple Pops Pro Pack uh -huh. in the App Pro Plus pack? Very good question. So the difference is, is you get the same, in each set, you have these interlocking rings. And once I get done, I need to let the, this dry and cool. And I'm, Joan and I were talking about this, I tend to be very patient with people and very impatient with things, okay? So I want that thing done, right? Um, but with this, you have to let it dry. Okay, in heirloom sewing, we call it dry, 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 or you will cry, cry, cry. Okay, and that's the same thing here. So while these are drying, like this is the one I did ahead of class, uh, demo tape. While this is drying, you want to be able to work on the next <coughs> shape. So the Pro Plus pack gives you double of all the rings. Okay, so you get all the sizes times two, so that if you're working on a project that has one inch circles, you can have one inch, one one inch drawing, drawing while you work on the next one inch. And in fact, if you have a program or a pattern where you are saying doing those 500 quarter inch circles or three eighths inch circles, email us at Patrick Garden and we can get you a custom set of one size, 10 of each, 10 of one size. So if you wanted just to do primarily half inch circles or one inch circles, we can get you a custom pack. Did that answer the question? Okay, any others from this side? Not yet. Okay. So but I'm... we have some people that have these and uh, love them. Oh, cool. Yes, they've been around for a little bit. And Jessica, it was actually a mom, a quilter, and that little story is kind of on our website. So she invented these. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I would just continue all the way around like you see there, and then I would set it aside and let it cool, okay? Let it dry, 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 or you will cry, cry, cry. Then from the front side, I'm going to pop it out. There's my circle. How about that, guys? It's amazing. Isn't it? It is so cool. And then I'm just going to peel this out. And then I would... Look at that. See? And then I would... And guys, I've only been playing for like a day and a half. Okay, so this is, don't think like, but it does take some practice, all right? It and the AppliQuick rods take practice. So that's why we're going to do that free pop session. All right, okay. Questions on those guys? Okay. Then the other, other great thing I love about them is because they are clear. Oh, discount code. Lunch. L-U-N-C-H is because the center is clear, how many English paper piecing? Ooh, it says I am on low battery. So I'm gonna speak quickly, because we may, even though this is plugged in, for some reason it's not charging. Okay, so hold on, I'm gonna see this warning signal, right? Okay, 
I just got it off the screen just in case you were seeing low battery warning on my camera. Okay, everything's plugged in. It's just been, it's just time for a new Apple. <laughs> it's four years old, so it's on the, okay, you need to replace me. But because the center, see, I can tell exactly where that flower is going to be so I can easily fussy cut everything. Wow. Yeah, it's way wow, okay? I'm impressed. You impressed? I, I am. am. I'm impressed too. I would, oh, and guess what I found? This seems to be <laughs> There it is. Okay, yeah, I knew I had it. Okay, so in top, if there aren't any, aren't any other questions, Joan, about the apple Not pods? yet. Okay. No. Nope. No. Nope. All right, so once again, oh, guys, Are there other shapes? There are not other shapes of these. I wouldn't, I'm gonna say yet. Yeah. Would be my guess, all mm -hmm. right? Because these have worked so successfully that I have a feeling there might be some ovals and there might be some leaves to come. But that's where the apple sticks can really come in and help. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for example, I'm just gonna come back here and say this. Because the stick, for example, I can hold this and then I can just use this little edge just as a little iron and I can do that on a metal shape, I can do it on a plastic shape, I can do it on freezer paper. So here is, speaking of other shapes, there's a little leaf that I made this morning with the applica sticks. And what's in here is just freezer paper, okay? And I left a little, so can you zoom in just a tad for me? A little more maybe. Yeah, so guys, can you see right there, if Helen is being very anal, there's a little bump <laughs> on my leaf. So with the applique sticks, and I'll, I can do one from scratch, but all I can also do is just come in here and with the side of my iron, that little beveled edge, just roll that seam allowance in, give it a press, and I no longer have a little bump on my leaf. Okay, okay so another question. Can you talk about the water-soluble glue pen? Is that what you just used? Okay, so that, do they have access to the off-screen camera? <laughs> So what I used and have poured all over the, um, the table here is starch, okay? Liquid starch, Stay Fresh or Niagara, whatever you want to buy at Tops or Wegmans or your local grocery store, uh, wherever you're joining us. Um, and I used it at 100%. I did some testing, okay? They had 100% liquid starch. They had um, the inventor's recipe, which I made up. That's the recipe. Mm -hmm. um, with cornstarch, um, I found that the straight starch did the best. Or straight starch, I did one tablespoon to one teaspoon of water. Okay. The other great thing that you can do instead of using your paintbrush is I put that 100% starch solution in my Easy Press pen from Acorn. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. And then that way, when I'm applying it, I'm not working with a big paintbrush, and all I do is press down on the applicator, and I get a very tightly controlled application of my starch. And I'm gonna give you a heads up, guys. There might be more to come with this pen. Oh, really? Right, for future lunch and learn. That, oh, that's true, I right? know that, yes. <laughs> I'm going, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I am in the planning problem meetings, yes. Okay. All right, so that's another way you can do it. You can also use, I haven't tested the glue pen here on this ring. Um, and the reason why is, is, is in Western New York, yesterday and today, it's been extremely humid. So when I was do, even preparing my little leaf here, with the applique sticks, which I do use the water-soluble glue pen for, um, I had to go run put my uh, glue stick in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure even when I do this demo, the glue is going to kind of get a little wonky. But that's a great question. Any others? Not yet. Okay. So with the rods, mm -hmm. which we can use to shape that leaf or do any shape, so you're not constricted, 
but I really loved, I used my rods to make my circles actually, but those things, is this is my little sunbonnet Sue. And you wanna, and I'll give you an idea of how little sunbonnet Sue is. That's a quarter. Oops. It okay. might have, there we go. There you go. Okay. So sunbonnet Sue was made with the applique sticks and freezer paper, or I also love to use Helen Stubbing's applique paper. I want to talk about that. There has been a new improvement to her paper, it's supposedly thicker, so you get a sharper edge, but we are waiting for its US release. Mm -hmm. So I didn't put it on tonight or today's program. As soon as it comes up, I'm Joan, I'm sure we'll put it in a Saturday Smile or, mm -hmm. but that also works really, really well because you don't have to remove the foundation paper. You don't have to remove the freezer paper. It just washes away, okay. So with the applique sticks, all I've done is this is a piece of freezer paper from Kim Deals, um, applique freezer paper that's on your interactive page. And then I have my glue stick, which has been, yeah, it's not going to look too well, <laughs> even though it's been in the freezer. It's been a while since I left home. And I am just going to apply, I think I'm going to get rid of stuff down here. Apply my glue. Yeah, you can see guys, it is not not playing nicely it's not playing nicely in the in the playground and then on my rods I have a end that has a fork on it and I'm going to use that fork to just hold everything down it's like a third finger then I'm going to just take that beveled edge and just go under and swipe and bring it in under swipe bring it in and you see how it is forming that curve. And if I had glue on that seam allowance, it would be holding it even better. And then I can go in. Can you give me a little more zoom, Joan? I can go in here and do you see this little pleat that's getting ready to form? Oops, sorry, how That's okay, I got it. Okay. I can come in here and just flatten that little pleat down with my little iron. And then I won't get a, a bump on the other side. If I flip that over, that's going to be a pretty darn smooth edge. There we go. Whoops, that's my finger. If you'd like to see the piece. Here. There you go. So you can see how I got that very smooth edge. I will say, guys, the applique sticks and the pops take some practice, right? Um, but they are well, well worth the time. So I think we're close to our, ooh, I'm, I'm a little long. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, but that's why we're offering the, the POPs class. So I hope you've had fun. I love applique. If you have any questions, does anybody else have any questions? We have a few announcements to make. Our next Lunch and Learn is going to be um. on April. Oh, I want to show you some things you can do with applique POPs. Let's show them some pictures, Joan, real quick. Okay, how about create your own backgammon board? with Apple Pop sticks, or how about show off your fabric stash? Oops, wait, here they come. This is just a phenomenal, just just <coughs> circles of circles. Here they combined oh, how fun. fussy cut, fussy cutting, but you don't have to fussy cut, fussy place, and then long stitch between the, uh, the um, circles. Just absolutely gorgeous. I wanna do that. Then we have this gorgeous wreath coming up. All the little circles and berries. And then how to use it in a traditional applique. And then this gorgeous piece. So we have a lot of fun with Apple Pops. You'll be seeing a lot of it. April 23rd is our next Lunch and Learn, guys. And we are going to have a very, very special guest. In fact, it's an international guest. Someone it will is. be joining us from outside of the United States. And they are actually the inventor of the product we're going to be products we're going to be showing. So we're really glad to have them join us. And we're even gladder that Saturday we are on spring break. So we will be taking a short vacation. We will be closed Saturday through Tuesday, but the online store is open, so shop guys, and we will start filling those orders as soon as we get back on Wednesday next week. I hope you have fun. I hope it was a good show. Lots of thumbs up if you did, and we will see you in two weeks for the next Lunch and Learn. Bye, guys. <laughs>